cafe. Can I have some funny sounds coming out of your car? I know. The only thing that don't make a noise is the Uta. <laughs> By the screws, Betty, this gout isn't half painful. Say, exactly what is gout? Well, the old one, the doctor said it's something you get in your extremities. <laughs> I'm half glad it's only in my big toe. <laughs> Has the uh, second Pony Express arrived? We've got through to Fort Moffat yet? Just, he brought this. One rectangular circular from the Department of Energy. Well, oh, hardly worth risking an hour up the pass, was it? What is the latest message of conservation then? Burn your scrap asbestos. It just says, save it. Well, then, I must have been sending these to my missus. <laughs> As usual, she's been getting the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> well, there's plenty of it, isn't there? If they send us enough copies, we can we can burn these to eat the radiators. Is there uh, is a note from Garsides about that quote? No, nothing at all. Oh, well, we couldn't have to do with that job. I've only got about a day's work left. That won't keep our lot going for more than a week. And there's nothing for the hard castles either. Hard castles? <laughs> no, I don't want their order. Joe Gregory can have that. I'd go skint on the prices I gave. Then why bother quoting? To stir things up. I mean, Sam Arkansas's no mug, you know. He'd want discount on a free balloon. <laughs> what, I mean, the thing is, what he does is he gives Joe Gregory the orders, but he uses us to check the prices. Mind you, on the quote I give him, he'll be tearing Joe Gregory invoice for an invoice. Do you know, it'd serve you right if he gave you the job. No chance. I left out the delivery date as a precaution. <laughs> <laughs> he starts making interesting noises, I'll give him an impossible delivery date, and they'll still be at one another's throats. <gasps> Brilliant. Have I ever denied it? <laughs> Mind you, I'm, I'm getting a bit worried about Garside's order. I don't know what the devil we're going to do if we don't get it. I think, I think it's about time that I brought Plan A for Apprentice into operation. You know what day it is today, don't you? I know what day it isn't. It isn't my birthday, because it's two o'clock and you haven't brought me a present yet. And on my birthday, you don't buy me a present a lot earlier than that. <laughs> it's not a day of action, either. I've been through all the newspapers, there's not one trade unionist who's come out on strike about all the people who haven't got a job to have a day off from. Go on, then. Surprise me. What day is it? It is the anniversary, Betty, of the day I first started in this business. A penniless lad with all the disadvantages. Trousers that were older than I was. Shoes that led the water through the holes in the soles and out through the cracks in the backs. <laughs> come off it, Moffat. You inherited this business from your father. That was another disadvantage. My dad was tighter than I am. He never spent a penny on this place, you know. If he got a leak in the roof, he used to stick a screen around it and call it a shower. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's taken me years to bring this place up to the slum it is today. Look, what is the reason for all this self-congratulation? Well, as a matter of fact, Betty, as I was coming to work today, I, I saw this lad standing on this corner, and do you know, he, he looked like me when I was his age. So much for all the advances in medicine. But just, what are you getting round to? I am getting round to the fact that life has been very kind to me. I mean, look what it's given me. A big house to look after for a building society. <laughs> An overdraft of my own. Employees like you to yell at. It's about time I did something in return. So I have decided that although we don't need one, I am going to take on an apprentice. So you can better put an advert in the Mercury for one. Yeah, all right. But where's the besides which? You always have one. Oh, ye of little faith. I'm doing this out of the gooiness of my heart. And I absolutely and categorically deny it has got anything to do with the fact that Garside's manager, Sid Parker, has rang me up telling me that his sister's youngster's looking for an apprenticeship in engineering. So, why do I have to put an advert about an apprentice in the Mercury? Because if you advertise the vacancy officially, you get a government grant as well. <laughs> Thank you. Who's the Dalek? <laughs> Dalek? Oh, that, that lad out there with the metal dandruff and the brass ring with acne, isn't it? Oh, that's, he's come about the apprenticeship, hasn't he? And would you believe, Mr. Sid Parker of Grassides rang. He said he had a telephone call about our advert in the Mercury. That was a bit of luck, wasn't it? Yes, wasn't it? And he said that the interested party would be right over and that he hoped you had an open mind. With the same breath of air on its way down his nose, he said that he hoped to let you have a favourable reply to that quote very shortly. Now I'm sure there's no connection whatsoever between those two statements and it won't affect your decision anyway. Of course not. 
I mean, I don't need a bribe to tell me that that poor lad out there is suffering from mental fatigue. I don't, I don't need a bribe to tell me that he is exactly the sort of lad we're looking for. Not to mention the police. Dirty, you mustn't judge a book by its cover. I do if it's mucky. I know, but all, all those chains, I mean, at least we'll know where he is. And not only that, I mean, he's just shown impeccable manners. I mean, you should have seen the way he yanked his girlfriend aside so I could come in. It was beautiful. Girlfriend? That's another applicant for the job. But she's a girl. I do believe she is. Unless, of course, I've turned over two pages at once in my How Mummy and Daddy Get Together book. Oh. But surely you, you, you advertised for a lad, didn't you? You can't do that now. You're not allowed to state which sex you want. You're talking about lads who've only got one sex. <laughs> the law says in every advert you have to put male or female. Does it? Well, we're not having a girl in this factory and that is flat. My old man is turning his urn. What, uh, what does Sid Parker's nephew call himself? Lenny. <coughs> Lenny? I was there first. I'm sorry, love. It's alphabetical in these works and boy comes before girl. Come on. <laughs> Well, rest your chest. I wonder if he's had himself valued. About four and a half quid's worth of scrap hanging off it. <laughs> right, now then. I think if we take the helmet off, we might be able to tell talk from mutter. Watch me lips. Helmet off. May the force be with you, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, Gaffer, Gaffer. I'm, I'm sorry, Harry. <laughs> but Gaffer. Harry, I'm interviewing the man from Uncle. We have a problem. We'll have a bigger one if we don't get Garside's order. Look, what would you say if I told you that the factory inspector is at this moment looking at your machines? Something rather obscene. Betty, put your head in the drawer. You're joking. I am not. All right. We'll be back in a minute. Hey, give, give him one of those application forms to send us. Give him a pencil. Show him which of the pointer then. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, love. If you're waiting with Ginger, you can't wait. You'll have to wait in the yard, love. Not in the factory today. I've got a factory inspector on my back. Mr. Moffat, I'm the inspector. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, love. I didn't know there were, you know, like, you know, what happened to the little fellow we used to have to dodge? <laughs> you, you know, if you we... mean my erstwhile colleague, Mr. Hartman, he's been retired. Well, was he losing his grip? <laughs> we uh, used to have a few laughs, you know. He, he once suggested I let this place out as a training ground for the SAS. <laughs> Shall we get on, Mr. Moffat? I doubt it, my lord. <laughs> now then, when was this place last painted? Well, I can't really tell you, though. I mean, not to the nearest World War, but... <laughs> They made a good job of it when they did it, you know. Picasso did the undercoats. <laughs> no, to tell you the truth, it's a bit difficult the way business is. Well, Mr. Moffat, I'm sorry, but uh, frankly, I find these places quite disgraceful. Yes, well, I'm not all that keen on it myself. <laughs> it's not funny, Mr. Moffat. No, I don't suppose it is really. But they... And as to that medieval horizontal miller. Oh yeah, they, they don't they don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> I should be making sure of that. Meanwhile, I'm putting a complete stop on it. You, you can't do that. I, I'm, I'm getting an order from Garside. Oh, yes, I can. It's a death trap. Not to be used under any circumstances. I know that, but you see, this order from Garside... I'll have a word with your shop steward. You'll need an interpreter. And I'll be back. <laughs> very soon. Yes, thank you very much. For very little. <laughs> She's only a woman. Yes, they usually are. Who? What do you mean, ooh, you sound like an owl. That damn woman in there. The factory inspector. The woman. I hope a living bra gets housemaid's knee. Hey, Dad, do I uh, sort of get the job or do you get a brick through your window? How would you like to come second in a sole survivor contest? No offence, man. It's just me way of talking. I'm my own worst enemy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't take a gallop poll on that. Has <laughs> he filled in the form? Yes. How did he do? Very well. Question, what is an isosceles triangle? Answer, triangles are square, ma'am. <laughs> Second question, what do you get if you divide a half by a quarter? Answer, a lot of little bits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> File it in the waste paper basket. All right, Leonard, I won't mess you about. 
By virtue of the power invested in your uncle to give orders, I now pronounce this master an apprentice. Oh, my uncle's been leaning on you, has he? You could say that, yeah. So I suggest you go straight round and tell him that you're in. Well, look, don't you worry about it. You just watch your step and uh, I'll see you right. See ya. I'm going to enjoy having him about. <laughs> It'll make everybody else seem normal. You wouldn't get shortlisted for a village idiot's labourer. I blame these incomprehensible schools they get to, you know. One of them gets an answer right, they stick him in detention so it doesn't embarrass the rest. Look, do I get an interview or not? I've been hanging round out there like jelly in a pepper pot. Why don't you sit down? Look, I I'm sorry, uh, Nancy. Nancy, well, Nancy, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid the position's been taken. You can't mean by that more on Lenny Burton. Now, look, I know all about this sexual equality and all that like, but this place isn't suitable, love, not with all the bad language. I don't swear that much. <laughs> you haven't got an uncle who could do us a favour, either. I have, you know, and he can do you more good than Lenny's unless you want trade discount off a broken arm. What do you mean? Lenny's uncle is Meat Mountain Murgatroyd, the chap who wrestles at the baths on Saturday nights. It's for you. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, love, but you'll have to excuse me. All right. Not bothered. Can always get a job at Gregory's. Yeah, I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> ah, hell. We nearly dropped one over that Lenny, didn't we? I wonder where the devil Sid Parker's nephew's got to. Well, it's Sid Parker on the phone now. What? Oh, got me for that. <laughs> Sid, Fred Moffat. Hey, what's happened to your nephew? What do you mean it's not a nephew? What's her name? Hang on a minute. Nancy! <laughs> Nancy! <laughs> oh, well. This tea's starting to look as bad as it tastes. I don't know what you're looking so miserable about. Sid Parker gave you the order. I know, and that factory inspector gave us another, didn't she? Don't use the damn machine we need to do the order on. You don't listen half the time, I'm sure, Betty. I tell you something else, I am not all that keen on Sid Parker's niece and that ginger being in the same county. Well, she'll be all right. Working next to Superstud? I should think so. <laughs> yeah, God. If he doesn't get a retainer from Mother Care, he ought to appeal through an industrial tribunal. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing, I'm not, I'm not risking that order before we even start on it. So when the inevitable occurs, I don't want you to let that girl out of your sight before we complete the contract. I'm sorry, but at 12 o'clock I stop being a con man's labourer for a whole week. I'm taking my 1974 annual holiday. <laughs> I did warn you. You've been warning me every year since 1975. Why the hell do you pick now to mean it? Because I've got trouble at home. All right. Well then, work shy Wally. Don't call him that. It's not his fault that he's unemployed. It is when he uses the red cow as a job centre. <laughs> What's he done? Nothing, and for a very long time. The pilot light has gone out on my marriage, and so I'm going to relight the flame before his meter peters out. You make him sound as if he's on off peak. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you taking him on holiday? I mean, apart from upstairs. Well, we haven't decided yet, but I'd like to go somewhere a bit exotic. It'll be freezing cold in Morecambe at this time of the year. That's nearer the truth than you think. Why, where are you going, Fleetwood? <laughs> no, Wally's mum and dad live in Morecambe, so that's favourite. Look, Betty, I'm, I hate to have to admit this, but I need you at the moment. Bad luck. Mine is greater than thine. But you'll be all right. I've arranged for a little temp called Sandra to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous Moffat. Not another flaming female. Uh, Gaffer, OK to take the afternoon off. It's the uh, old grandfather. Oh, it's not looking too good. <laughs> what is he, sort of blue in the face, short of breath? Well, something like that. Uh, it's probably not getting enough air, you see, Harry. You probably didn't bury him in a big enough coffin the last time England played Scotland. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. did I say grandfather? I, I meant grandmother. Ah. 
passed away Wimbledon week. <laughs> On my mother's side. A Trent Bridge test match. <laughs> Harry, what do you think I've got in here? Look, surely all your family must have died by now through terminal sporting fixture. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry, you can't go. I need you to put that milling machine, bring it up to specification. For God's sake, go and get on with it. Oh. What was it I had to do? Oh, I never remember. Oh, yes, must warn the lads about that milling machine like the factory inspector told me. All right, don't just stand here talking. You'll miss the kickoff. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I don't know anything about it. And Mr. Muppet isn't back yet. So would you care to shout at him later? Right, bye. <sighs> Mr. Muppet. Uh, no, Muppet, love. I've had ever so many phone calls. Oh, I'm ever so sorry I'm late. <laughs> you see, I had a bit of trouble with the car, you know, water in the carburetor, but it'll be all right when they get it out of the canal. <laughs> uh, you'll be Sandra the Tempest, I presume? No, I'm Rose. I'm your Temp's Temp. Sandra couldn't come. Oh, uh, a Mr Simpson ran complaining about some invoices. Said it was a third time. Oh, dear, we shall have to get a computer. I can't use one of those. It's not to use, love, it's to blame. <laughs> is, uh, this your forest, is it? Oh, I like to bring my rubber plant along. It makes the place seem more homely, doesn't it? I suppose it does if you're living with Tarzan. <laughs> Mind you, I see you've got Cheetah here. That's my Mick Jagger poster. Isn't he lovely? He doesn't half get me going. Well, there. I wish to God he was here at the moment. <laughs> just take it down. You let them have pictures of naked women in there. That's just so I don't have to buy him a real dartboard. <laughs> Why is it so damn dot in here? I've turned the eating up. Well, old Jack did before he went. Before he went? He's, he's supposed to be working on that milling machine. Where's he gone? To the match. To the match? He don't know one end of a football to the other. I mean, he doesn't know which linesman the hooligans toss up to see who starts the riot. <laughs> He said if Harry was having time off, so was he. Oh, well, that's lovely, that is. Well, I shall have to get young Charlie on it, then. You can't. This girl came in and started crying all over him. So he cried back and they went off down the road like two passionate pythons. Yeah, they would pick now to patch up their differences, wouldn't they? Well, that, that just leaves Ginger. <coughs> it doesn't. Apparently, Ginger tried a bit of hanky-panky on young Nancy, so she belted him with a wrench. <laughs> He's going to have six stitches put in it. Put in what? Don't oh, ask me. You mean to tell me that Nancy's in there on her own? Wrong again. She got upset at the sight of Ginger's blood. She just rushed off home crying her eyes out. Oh, yeah, well, we haven't got confirmation of that order from her uncle yet. Right, I'll be back if anybody wants me. The name's Muffet. you'd leave those damn leaves alone, I should be glad when it's autumn. They don't drop off in the autumn. Don't they? They would if it was still here, I'll tell you. <laughs> Look, get me uh, Sid Parker and Garside's on the phone. What for? Stop asking questions! <laughs> Go, dear, dear, dear. You must know, I've got to let Nancy's uncle know that Ginger apologises for getting in the way of that wrench. <laughs> Otherwise, we lose a big contract. So what's all the fuss about? You got a big order from Hardcastle's in the midday post, thanks to me. Oh, Castle, thanks to you. What the devil are you talking about? I never give him a, a, a delivery date. I know. You could have lost it being so careless. <laughs> See what it says. Order valid only if maximum delivery of three weeks is confirmed by return. So you confirmed it? Of course. On the acceptance slip that I posted off just before you came in. I wonder where I can get a reconditioned suicide kit. <laughs> Hello. Mavis. It's Rose here. Listen, Mavis, I forgot to tell you I can't come round tonight. No. I'm having one of those facials. Yeah. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm just talking to my friend, Mavis. Sorry about the interruption, Mavis. Listen, did you hear about her next door? She is, you know. Put it down. Well, my mother told me, so it must be that, isn't it? Put I'm it telling down. you. It is. Oi! Put that flaming phone down. I can't talk to you now, Mavis. How many more times do you have to be told about personal phone? If you make another phone call off that, I'll have those damned holes polyfilling. Honestly, <laughs> take down the poster and move the plant and don't use the telephone. I don't think I like working here. How would you know you haven't tried it yet? <laughs> that does it. <laughs> and I'm not coming back. Promises, promises.
promises. Can I have that in writing? <laughs> your week of passion and lust in downtown Morecambe. Well, by the time we finish arguing about me paying for it because it made Wally feel inferior and him wanting to go to his mum and dad's in Morecambe and me not, it was too late. Well, Wally should feel inferior because Wally is inferior. But I mean, why are you too late? You weren't going until today. I know, but by the time we finished arguing, Wally's mum and dad arrived to spend the week with us. <clears throat> why have you come back to work? Well, I mean, why so early? You haven't met Wally's mother, have you? No, oh, it's like that, is it? No, it's worse than that. Well, I'll tell you something. I, I've, I've never been so so happy to see somebody come back because that temp you fixed for me, she was all right. She was right round the twist. You mean Sandra? No, Sandra couldn't come, could she? She had sent another one called Rose. Not rambling Rose. <laughs> she had the green fingers and her legs are a funny colour as well. And I'll tell you something, <laughs> rambling Rose is a very dis... Postman gave me these. Oh, thanks, Nancy. What the hell are you doing here at this time? Well, I couldn't sleep. I was up half the night worrying about Ginger. How is he? Well, the doctor's reckoned with a body transplant and <laughs> major surgery on his prospects. He'll be almost normal. <laughs> which is a miracle of modern medicine because he wasn't normal in the first place. <laughs> Don't worry, love. You stick around. You'll see him arrive as bad as new. I won't. I'm packing the job in. What? After all the damn work up, that's all I need. Well, I only took it to get on the next lathe to my boyfriend at night school. And now he's gone off with this Linda Jackson and I've broke my nails, got oil in my hair and I'm fed up. <laughs> You're not on your own, love. Oh, God, as one door closes, another jam shut. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? I get an order from Hardcastle that's like a, a, a kiss of life from a vampire bat and I lose the one from her uncle that could have saved me. Has my uncle been at it again? He bribed you into giving me that job, didn't he? You didn't know? I've told him before I fight my own battles. Just wait till I get my hands on him. No, no, wait, wait a minute. Look, look. If you want to get your own back, why don't you go and tell your uncle you suspect he bribed me, then he don't take the order away, or otherwise you'll know he did, and then he wouldn't be able to do it. And why should I? Well, apart from, you know, getting your own back, I mean, I'd get Ginger to go and have a go at that Linda Watson name. Your boyfriend wouldn't see her for lust. Right. You're on. Nice doing business with you. See ya. <laughs> All right, Nancy. You might look to your uncle, won't you? Oh, hell, that one's a bit close, wasn't it? <laughs> if only we could get out of our castle's order with... with... What the hell is this? It's one of, our, one of our envelopes. <coughs> Isn't she lovely? Who? <laughs> Rambling Rose, the Tempest Temp. Look what she's done. Look. Look, that hard castle's order, look. She, she, she's only made a mistake and addressed it back to us. Hey, what a lovely little moron she is. You have the luck of the devil. What do you mean, the luck of the devil? You only need three things to be successful in business these days, Betty. Number one, conviction. Number two, courage. And number three? The luck of the devil. <laughs> to the left or to the right because they're all the same in office when they make it overnight presents the time he spends on paperwork and VAT keeps the money that the tax man doesn't see he's a gap up doesn't need to take advice he's a gap up he's your man at any price he's a gap up single handed runs the show he's a gap up 